if you resign what is the plan it is hundred thousand it may not be the best but it's still not the worst at least it can cover your shame in terms of your basic needs while you are trusting god to scale higher someone shout planning please take the time to plan you are a leader over any ministry or any organization here have a personal retreat to plan in koinonia you already know 31st december 6 p.m on the dot the prophetic word for the next year is out without fail there is no excuse whatsoever planning it's not something that happens just overnight no this is the last service it was planned the next service is already planned see this is one of the blessings that we learned in the seminary respectfully speaking you see most of the organizations that we may call orthodox and this they are master planners Pentecostal charismatic circles, if we are not careful, we can randomly do things and we say as the spirit leads. It is important to plan. Your child is going to school in January. They've increased his school fees. Have you seen the PTA letter? Until you see, don't buy the cow yet. You can manage with chicken and you can't go and buy a cow of 500,000 and then be begging for money for 100,000 for your child. Planning. It may not be for everybody, but this is a prophetic word for someone. In a retreat, please plan. Okay, the house rates have increased. I may not have my own property now, but how much do I pay? 1.5, 2 million naira. How did I raise the 1.5, 2 million naira the last time? Oh, it was a gift. Will it remain a gift forever? No, so I need to plan. If you know it will come through relationships, start greeting the people in advance. Since that is, is part of planning. It is funny, but it is true. Please let me have your attention. We have a lot to do. Listen, the house of God is a place of wisdom. And if we are bankrupt of wisdom, our lives will be hard. Don't send somebody a text two days to help and say calvary greetings you know i'm i'm, I'm um, just just I, i'm just asking out how you are doing and then 10 minutes later here comes a long list like an exam question just to, no 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 planning my wife is pregnant she's going to give birth in nine months that's nine months notice how do you say oh i didn't plan for cs what does that mean nobody prays for cs but an intelligent person you will plan what if listen we hope for the best but we prepare for anything faith is not foolishness don't be angry oh i love you this is a retreat this is a i'm i'm, I'm teaching us because this thing we we need to bring wisdom to the body of christ you don't move around when your wife is already in the theater you are just calling and say wickedness nobody likes me no shout amen please plan as a father if you did a bad job over your family don't worry don't beat yourself down but plan why is the spiritual life of this family going down okay it's because we don't pray maybe that time of fellowship is not there maybe i'm too busy to spend time with my wife and children how can i be a better father i'm an exceptional ceo but my family is dying something needs to go well Create a program, even if it's once in a month, I'm going to spend some time with my family. Anybody who calls you, tell them, please, I'm spending time with my family. This is one of the blessings of the white and people in the West, sincerely. You can literally give an excuse that I'm spending time with my family and they will respect it. What our great, wonderful nation, spending time with your children. So it's us that don't have to, okay. Let's finish up. What should happen in a retreat? Obtain the doing grace. Write doing grace in capital. Your retreat is not complete until you obtain the doing grace. There is a grace called the doing grace. The doing grace. Because your plans and your resolutions will come to naught if you do not put them to action, to work. The doing grace has a mandate to put fire upon your bones until there is execution. 
the assignment of the doing grace is to not give you rest until you put your thoughts your plans that are on paper you make them work on two legs the in john 13 17 john 13 17 if ye know these things the bible says happy are ye if ye do them so it's not enough to know i have said i'm going to buy a car next year by the grace of god that car is five million naira i've raised two million naira we thank god for grace god is granting me grace as i plan you obtain grace you start doing doing I've made up my mind that my family will be happy this year. My wife and children will not have cause to say I'm an irresponsible father. That is a, an excellent plan. What are you going to do about it? You obtain the doing grace. Do you know? Let me tell you the truth. Without the doing grace, all plans will come to naught. The same way many of us, you can go back to your January journal and see many beautiful things you wrote. And some of us, sadly, not even one of them has been done. Is because you miss the last ingredient of your retreat obtaining the doing grace lord let that grace come from heaven that makes men to run that makes visions to run the doing grace romans 7 19 romans 7 19 paul was speaking and he he vocalized his frustration he said for the good that i would i do not but the evil which I will, I will not do, that I do. That means he's saying, listen, by my spirit, there is a willingness to do this. But I find another law. There is another energy that is depleting my passion and not giving me the impetus, the drive to move forward. For someone here who has been planning, planning forever without doing, in the name of Jesus, let this be the season where the grace for execution comes upon you. hallelujah one day i'll get that land you've not gone around the neighborhood to even see where any empty land is chances are excellent you may never build listen even if it is one billion you need it will still come by faith don't be afraid and for someone you want to build a house your budget is 50 million or 100 million depending on the kind of house and all that you have is one million let me tell you the truth one thing i know is that signs follow they don't go before if you cannot take a step of faith believing God to help you, it's better to die in his presence than to live jumping outside of his presence. There are certain risks you cannot escape. It will always be by faith. You can take that one million and buy as much blocks or sharp sand and go and pour it on that side there and say, Father, this is a sign of faith. I have made you Alpha, be Omega. I started this building with you. Now your reputation is part of this architecture for your namesake. And you'll be surprised. Someone will call you and say, are you building? Say, yes. Say, God just said I should give you 10 million. And before you know it, the day you finish that building, if they ask you, where did the money come from? You say, sincerely, even me, I've added everything. I don't know where the rest came from. God is bringing healing to someone. Don't be discouraged. I don't just mean bodily healing, healing in your mind. Because the Lord is just ministering to me that there are people here who have been frustrated. It looks like your life never moves forward. There is, you are not doing anything. People are already speaking and saying, what kind of person are you? It's like a complete mark time in every area of your life. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace that our hearts always hunger for. Oh, our hearts always hunger. One more time. Hey, you are the one that we pray. something I know about God I don't know everything about him we remain students learning him 
but let me tell you something about God God restores this is a word for someone apostle even my wasted years my goodness did he not say I will restore the years don't sit down and say by now I would have built the house by now I would have had the children by mm -mm -mm -mm. there's there's no point for regret you are talking to the God who owns time he's not limited to time look at the gentleman he said for how many years his life had been on drugs and all kinds of things but restoration just like that there is hope for a tree even if it be cut off some of you even in terms of establishment it looks like nothing is working in your life all kinds of witchcraft delays demonic things find rest my god bar is able to restore men and take 10 years and put it in one year yes this is true for you whether in politics and governance this is true whether in your career life I've not got a job and things don't seem to be working remember tonight is an impartation we're getting there now listen carefully ladies and gentlemen the God that I know and the God that I serve can restore apostle my prophetic grace the the anointing upon my life would have been at a dimension now but i became inconsistent at a point i became careless i was I, you know i was just frost don't worry don't worry apostle i would have built by now you can imagine i don't even have a plot of land i am 50 years fine rest the god of heaven that i know that you know that you have come to serve can give you rest with the dignity of kingdom integrity rest that you don't have to bend your head in shame because you maneuvered and bribed your way around no you give the healing and grace that my heart always hunger for oh Let me speak to a family here that had it rough this year and has had it rough the years past and you're saying god are you alive all we recorded this year was death of our loved ones maybe repossession of our properties whatever it is and it looks like the only thing i can say was right in my life you may say is that my walk with god did not go down but like job i've been beaten i do not even know what to do the Bible says in Job 42 and verse 10 that God restored the fortunes of Job. So God is a restorer. Is someone learning? So that's that about retreat. The fifth instruction. What is the fifth instruction to us? Share the love of Jesus to all around you. This is the fifth prophetic instruction we are receiving tonight. You want to be light and salt, even in this season? Share the love of Jesus to all around you. You cannot afford to be passive. You cannot afford to be silent. You cannot afford to be careless as far as the love of Jesus is concerned. Share the love of Jesus to all around you. The Bible teaches us, listen, help us under the anointing. The Bible teaches that there are two principal ways to share the love of Jesus. Number one, preaching. Number two, giving. The most effective way is to do both. Number one, I repeat, preaching. Number two, giving. In truth, it may not be convenient for everybody in terms of the preaching of the gospel as we know because our world has changed. We used to do one-on-one -on -one evangelism but right now you don't have that liberty you can stand in front of someone and they'll call a police for you because someone will say they just kidnapped the brother last week how are we sure you are not a terrorist go to the police station and wait there until you vindicate yourself so we must redefine our strategy for evangelism i'm saying this so you don't carry zeal and say apostle said we must share the love of jesus you just trap someone in front of his house and around the corner shouting jesus and that person is a police officer right there and then they will handcuff you and take you to the police station so you see jesus in giving us the great commission told us what to do go ye he told us where to go into all the world he told us what to do preach 
he told us who to preach to all creation but he didn't tell us how to do it he left the strategy to be flexible every other thing is fixed except the strategy because the strategy would need to be reinvented with civilization hallelujah so but generally speaking sharing the love of jesus involves preaching how shall they hear the bible says except there is a preacher romans chapter 10 now and that should be 15 am i right on that how beautiful it says at the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things in daniel 12 and verse 3 the bible says they that be wise shall shine like the stars the brightness of the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars even forevermore let me tell you the truth it is it is a good way of maximizing your time and your days to make sure that someone comes to jesus there are many of us who have our loved ones they are not yet saved you can give it a try one more time you sowed the seed last year don't be ashamed don't be afraid take that step again in love and then giving giving is one powerful way i know to share the love of jesus if you meet a man who is hungry it is said, put the gospel on top of a meal and give that man. Let him eat both. You don't meet a hungry man and tell him, forget about food. Just concentrate on Jesus. Spiritually, that may be right. But let me tell you, you don't know what hunger can do. Hallelujah. The truth is that this ministry, and I say it not to embarrass you. This ministry is a compendium of very blessed people. That is the truth. Yes, there are many who God is helping, but there are many people that are, they have seen the mercy of God. Now is a chance to be able to do something for someone. It doesn't have to be something with a lot of trumpet and noise, but right in your neighborhood, an IDP camp somewhere, somewhere you can just do something for someone. Gather some children that are running around and just get two or three Sunday school teachers to put them together let them jump around and sing and be happy and feel the love of a parent they may not have and then just give them even if it's a little gift entire budget hundred thousand and god says you did this for me get ready to laugh next year jesus said let the little children come so whoever brings him to them is getting closer to him too and whatever he is giving them your own commission is there too if jesus said let the little children come don't you think the person who pushes them to him also has a share don't close your hands no don't close your hands I'm challenging everybody please make sure you do something let something come out from you to bless you know you know I'm saying this many of you bless me and I'm happy God bless you but you see let's do something for someone who cannot reward you some of you have an area you there are people who sell all kinds of things you can just see them and say listen this is five thousand this is one thousand and they'll be surprised for what what did i do because they are not used to favor you have reintroduced jesus in another way for them let me challenge every leader here especially if you're a leader of a corporate organization a ministry you can be able to do something i'm not putting you under pressure but this is the responsibility of being salt and light families can do it the truth is we are blessed some of us your phone alone can feed a nation your shoe alone can feed a community. I'm not saying sell your shoe and I'm not saying feel guilty for being blessed. Because this one thing again we do in Africa. People feel blessed, get blessed and we make them feel guilty for the rest of their lives. As if they are responsible for our pain. No, that should not be. That's not what I'm advocating. But I'm saying wealth is useless until it is shared. Is someone learning? Five instructions. Let me recap them. Number one, give yourself continually to the word and to prayer. Please do not forget. Number two, invest in your health and your wellness. Rest. Number three, invest in building and maintaining your relationships, your family, your friends, destiny people in your life. Number four, very important, you can start number four go on an end of year retreat go on a personal retreat make it habitual 
especially for every defining moment in your life and then number five share the love of jesus to all around you through the ministry of preaching and giving hallelujah why did we call it an impartation service then what does it mean to impart to impart means number one to transfer spiritual possibilities number two to impart means to activate that which is already within you but is still in a state of dormancy impartation has two assignments listen carefully number one to transfer spiritual possibilities from a career by grace to one who is in need of it and is ready to receive but number two impartation also is responsible for activating something you already have but has not found visibility because it is dormant impartation is not always about transference impartation is also about activation there is a grace there is an ability there is a gifting there is something prophecy that is locked up within your spirit and many times it will remain dormant that way except and unless you encounter a genuine grace for impartation two examples and then we begin to pray the spiritual transfer is something that we see all through scripture that graces can be transferred paul said in um philippians chapter one i think number seven he says ye are all partakers of my grace ye are all partakers so men can partake of the grace that god has put upon his servant it's been an anthem here every time we talk about impartation we teach these scriptures numbers 27 18 and 20. it says thou shalt take joshua he said take thee joshua the son of Nun, a man in whom is the spirit and lay your hands upon him 19 set him before eleazar the priest and before all the congregation and give him a charge in their sight i like 20. 20 says and thou shalt put some of your honor upon him i told you you can respect yourself but you cannot honor yourself honor is a grace nobody can honor himself honor is an anointing it is conferred upon you what is honor honor means to be rewarded and acknowledged to to match your the your true worth and your true value when the grace for honor is not on you you will never be acknowledged and rewarded to match your true worth there are many gifted and graced and blessed people but because they do not have honor you see you see that they are being treated unfairly politically economically physically simply because that grace for honor is not there the assignment of the grace for honor is to create to magnify you in the eyes of men and to insist that you are acknowledged and rewarded to match your true worth deuteronomy 34 and verse 9 deuteronomy 34 9 and joshua the son of Nun was full of the spirit of wisdom how did that come about for moses had laid his hands upon him and the children of israel hearkened unto him exactly as they did moses because that grace was upon him in second kings chapter 6 and verse 17 second kings 6 17 remember the story of elisha and the young man the bible says and elisha prayed because elisha was seeing a host of heaven but that gentleman was there and he could not see there was no transference of anything to him but elisha prayed and said lord i pray thee open his eyes the capacity was there but it was dormant and the bible says and the lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw and behold the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about elisha there are things you have already but it is dormant no matter how beautiful a wall clock is even if you buy a rolex wall clock and there are no batteries powering it it will only stay there as a monument you can have the best refrigerator but if it's not plugged to electricity you will not see the potential many of us here carry dormant giftings and graces locked up within our bones 
but the assignment of an impartation is to activate it and give it visibility hallelujah so i want you to pay attention because the final stage we're just going to just flow very quickly and this impartation is not it's just going to be by speaking we're not doing oil and all of that you just receive and you'll be surprised you will leave this place and things just begin to change in your life remember i have taught you that you know what is on your cup by looking at what is on your head thou anointest my head with oil but i see the result on my cup he does not anoint the cup the cup is a testimony of what is on your head if the cup is empty don't blame the cup it's because the head is empty thou anointest my head with oil my business runs over thou anointest my head with oil the favor upon my life runs over hallelujah praise the name of the lord at the end of this impartation let me now say it in advance like we said as a ministry we practice the art of the end of year sacrifice as a global family we have done this for many years during the last service we give God's people an opportunity with understanding and with revelation to come in with their sacrificial seeds according to 1 Samuel 1 21 1 Samuel 1 21 the Bible says and the man Elkanah and all his house went up to offer unto the Lord the yearly sacrifice and his vow it was a practice that was done by revelation hallelujah so as a global family we do this every year number one as a sacrifice of thanksgiving number two as a sacrifice to be able to show the lord that my seed is part or is involved in what you are doing kingdom building and blessing god's people i i hate to say it but i submit to you and you know by the grace of god we're a ministry that god has shown mercy i can tell you this uh, for sure so uh, this is this is not some gimmicks we are people of integrity and we love God hallelujah the sacrifice that the believers are giving is not flying to heaven it will be added to the treasury as part of that which does what you know kingdom activity so it is an opportunity God said if I were hungry is it you I will tell I will not tell you but it's a powerful practice that I have done that we have done as a global family everyone who is genuinely connected to this grace at the end of the year the end of year sacrifices with understanding and also to be able to provoke favor and to set yourself on course for the next seasons i hope you know that a harvest of money is not the only thing you get from sacrifices money is the least of the blessings that come from sacrifices there are superior ones like the presence of god weightier dimensions of the presence of god favor wisdom access to the hearts of kings and nobles access to the keys of the hearts of gatekeepers these are weightier blessings that is the capital that buys money money itself is a product the capital that buys money is called true riches if you have money you are limited i have prayed for you many times that may you never be so blessed that all you have is just money because the person who has money alone truly is not a blessed man mm -mm. the bible says and abraham was old and well stricken in age genesis 24 and verse 1 it says and god had blessed him in all things God had blessed him in all things. Genesis 24 and 1. God had blessed him in all things. Is it 24 and 1 or 21 and 1? One of them. God had blessed him in all things. Abraham was old and well stricken in age. And the Lord had blessed him. That means you can be blessed but not in all things. There are many kinds of blessings. It says, and God is able to make all grace. How many? All grace. You can have some, but you can have all grace. Where financially you are prosperous, but every time you call on one man, a nation will answer you. That is true prosperity. 
there are many people who have money but they will call on nations and the money will help them call and nobody answers access to the hearts of kings if you have to use money to pay for everything in your life you are going to suffer because you will get to certain gates that the key that opens them is not money the key that opens them is the kings loving you that one money cannot do it are we together now yeah. my reward has won my battle for me the Lord my lifter has won my battle for me I'm a winner man a winner man is won my battle for me Lord my lifter has won my battle for me my reward has won my battle for me I'm a winner man a winner man is won my battle for me hallelujah so when we are done praying please let me speak to our global family don't give yet it's not about money let me do the praying first now we're going to do the impartation afterwards then when we are ready to give as a family of faith we can give and all the details will be given to you was someone blessed already today please rise up on your feet as one who is ready to receive Come, Dave. Oh, my lifting has come. Oh, my lifting has come. Oh, open your mouth and pray every grace every grace every grace shabra gata bagala ko sapra ndege bele ketosia every grace every grace every spiritual transference i will need to crown this year with honor someone is praying pray the grace for favor visibility honor with kings access to the hearts of men visibility over your giftings someone pray pray whether it is in governance in politics in business in ministry 
you are before the God of all flesh and he can surprise you by his spirit my life has changed for I've touched your grace my life has changed my life has changed Jesus Christ I decree and declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead please hear me any door standing in front of you that has refused to open I call upon the God of my covenant between now and December 31st please hear me in the name of Jesus that grace is coming on someone the grace for open doors that grace now the grace for apacotes katepata the grace for open doors receive that grace right now i speak to every closed door a father be open a father be open help them please i come in the name of he who holds the key of David he says I can open a door that no man can shut and shut a door that no man can open I say to you again I don't care how long that door has been locked in the name of Jesus we break that door open now we break that door open now we break the Pakos Katebata we break that door open now Hear me, there is a strange grace for visibility that is coming on people. Hear me, do you know what it means to be visible? To be visible means to be acknowledged by the optical eyes. You can be there and yet not be visible. Visibility is the key for being living a rewarded life. Until people know you are there, they cannot place a demand on your gifting and grace. Haparika Toskata, Ebreketos Ketevata, Abakeros, yeah, help them please. I don't know what has covered your glory, but in the name of Jesus, may that grace for visibility rest on you now. Let it rest on you now. Hear me. Please help them. When baby Jesus was born, no physical man announced and said a baby is born. There was a grace on him that made the Magi, they left their distance and carried gifts, gold, frankincense and myrrh, and they came to pay homage to a baby. Those 
those guys were wise men why will they pay homage to a baby so don't tell me i'm small they paid homage to a baby i say it again whatever has covered your glory so that those who honor you cannot find you i lift you by prophecy rise to a position of visibility rise to a position of visibility Now hear me, I have taught you here that all blessings come from God through men to men. All blessings come from God through men to men. All troubles come from Satan through men to men. In any case, men are always the midwives of destiny, whether it is from God or from Satan. Hallelujah. There are many of you, God said yes since January, but the man who will say yes on earth has not been available. And there are forces that have pushed them away. Let me prophesy for your destiny helpers. Because you see, let me tell you, you are as powerful as those who support what you represent. The Bible says in the multitude of men is a king's honor, not in the multitude of your gift. Every man ordained by God to respond to you favorably this year and for whatever reason, maybe by demonic intrusion, their attention has been taken away from you. I speak to the north, the south and the east and the west. I command your helpers to gravitate towards you. To I command your helpers to gravitate towards you. Gravitate towards you. Hallelujah. One of the mysterious spiritual currencies that buys a life of dignity and honor, including wealth, is this grace called favor. Favor is a grace. Look up, please. The understanding that favor is unmerited is not accurate. Favor is very merited. Favor is multidimensional. The dimension of favor that is not merited is the grace that administers salvation. But favor is merited. Proverbs 13, 15. It says, good understanding procured favor. Please give it to us. Good understanding giveth favor. But the way of the transgressor, the violator of patterns is hard. How do you know favor is on your life? The real proof of favor is access to the heart of men. You know you are favored to the degree to which there are men to answer and attend to the matters of your life. Favor carries a tripartite expression. Please listen. Favor, genuine Bible favor carries a tripartite expression. Number one, unusual kindness. Number two, unusual acceptance. Number three, unusual access. Until this tripartite expression is captured in your life, it is not favor. And I've told you, if it happens only once, it's not favor. It's breakthrough, but not favor. Favor must happen repeatedly, regardless of the circumstances. Exodus 3, 21. And I will give these people favor. Pay attention, please. In the sight of the Egyptians, and it shall come to pass that when ye go, help me please, ye shall not go empty. Psalm 44 and verse 3, for those who have been trusting God for structural establishment, here is the secret. They got not the land in possession by their own sword, neither did their own arm save them. But your right hand and thine arm, it says, and the light of thy countenance, because thou hast a favor towards them. Esther 2.15, the B part, the little village girl Hadassah who was brought from Shushan, the Bible says, and Esther obtained favor in the eyes of how many? All. When favor comes on you, the only person who cannot bless you is a blind man, provided they have eyes to see. All them that looked upon her, verse 17, not even the king was spared. 
and the king loved Esther above all the women and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins I know what favor is believe me with all humility I can tell you I may not know everything about it but there is something I know about the favor of God as we have received by grace in the name of Jesus upon someone right now someone who is tired Karakos palakatos. from the depth of my heart I pray for you as we have received freely may this grace God favor rest upon you now May this grace called favor rest upon you now. May this grace called favor rest upon you now. I speak to you. Obtain unusual kindness from men. Unusual acceptance with men. Unusual access to the hearts and the resources of men. The favor of God is the number one reason people succeed. I have taught you again and again that in this kingdom, who hates you does not matter. But who likes you matters. There are people who you cannot cast away. The Bible says when a man's ways pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemies. There are some enemies you can't cast away. You have to pray for a right of passage into their heart. Otherwise, that door will not be open. They are called gatekeepers. The covenant that binds them is beyond their attitude. Even in their fallen state, the throne of God still acknowledges them. You won't pray them away. You will pray for favor. For instance, there was no way to, bound, to bind and cast Pharaoh. If David was waiting, if, if Joseph was waiting to bind and cast Pharaoh to be prime minister, he would have waited forever. When God wants to lift Joseph, he will make Pharaoh have a dream that only Joseph can interpret and give him access to the palace the wine presser said i remember my wrong this day there was a young man who has been locked up my carelessness has added two years extra to his life and they said go and bring him and the bible says the king sent for joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon not god there are men who can send for you and bring you out of certain realms it was the king that sent for joseph never to return to the prison again Whoever needs to send for you, in the name of Jesus, may the voice of favor call them. May the voice of favor call them. May the voice of favor call them. Whoever must send for your family in this period, whoever must send for your ministry, whoever must send for your value, may favor compel them to call you. hallelujah let me tell you the truth this world is a very selfish world it takes the favor of God for people to turn their hearts and their minds and their eyes away from the nuances and distractions and to focus on your destiny to lift you this world is not that kind I can tell you people are very selfish they are about and justifiably so everybody is focused on building their destiny whatever will make someone suspend attention over his destiny and invest his attention his credibility his resources on you must not be natural oh come oh come Emmanuel and ransom captive Israel Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel has come to you, his Israel. Rejoice, rejoice. Emmanuel, he has come to you, his Can I pray for speed? Listen, again I have taught you in this house that the unit of destiny is time. 
and one of the ways to abort a glorious destiny is to corrupt the potential for achieving much with respect to time your lifetime is a measure of your birth from the day you transit separated from your body and one of the strategies to abort great destinies is that satan creates obstructions and impedances on your way so that you are not able to do much in time but there are two systems of advantage that have been deployed by the intelligence of god to remedy that constraint number one is called restoration number two is called speed when these twofold forces work in the life of a man you must gain time restoration brings back time speed accelerates you to do much within a short time this is what i want to declare over your life speed is a very powerful system of advantage that much can be done within a short time in the name of jesus i call upon the god who called me the one by whom we have obtained apostles in the name of jesus christ by this apostolic and prophetic mantle i speak to someone May that grace for speed come upon you now. May that grace for speed come upon you now. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Hallelujah. Let me declare over you. If there is anybody here that the spirit of death is already tracking, that 20 help them please that 2022 will be your last year and then something mysterious will happen in the name of Jesus I pray you shall not die I say it to you prophetically you shall not die not by the arrows that fly by day not the noisome pestilences not the destruction that wastes in noonday I speak to you that a thousand shall fall by your side Subscribe to be inspired, turn on notifications and leave a like, comment and share to help the spread the gospel. Thank you for watching.